Jane Harmon is a former co-chair of the House Intelligence Committee. She is now president of the Woodrow Wilson Centre. Good to have you with us. Uh, I read the European papers today on this issue and there's some consternation this side because they look at John Bolton, uh, the National Security Advisor, and they remember and they think back to the Iraq campaign and some of the concerns that he issued about Saddam Hussein and the weapons of mass destruction and they see a similar pattern here. Jane Harmon, can you hear me? No, you just now again. Oh yes, I can. You I'm can sorry. I thought you were playing something. Great. No, you ah, can hear me. I was just, I was my, just saying. My apologies. I can't hear you. I thought you were about to play something. And no, I'm sorry. Something. Let me rephrase uh, the question. Yes, actually, me, that, uh, that was yeah, a, no, that was a Christian I, question I, I, without a question. Yeah, it was a statement of fact, really, that people yeah, have well, concerns uh, about yeah. John Bolton. Now we're back together again. And yes, I have concerns. <laughs> I saw the Iraq movie up close and personal. I was a senior member of the House Intelligence Committee. I voted to go to war in Iraq based on what turned out to be a flawed, wrong national intelligence estimate. Uh, since then, we have re reformed the way we do intelligence estimates in this country, and our NIEs are much better. Where's the NRE in this case? Uh, I, I just heard you play Mitt Romney. I'm, I'm not sure if he's, a, I don't think he's a member of the Senate Intelligence Committee. Uh, and and uh, I, you know, I'm sure he's a very smart member of the Senate, but uh, it takes a lot to understand these things. And uh, I heard your uh, general, the, the deputy of the anti-ISIS campaign, say he doesn't know where the intelligence is. All we seem to have is uh, some statement from Central Command, which is in the region, and we have uh, a briefing of some Europeans by Pompeo, who I don't, don't think made the sale. My point here is, yes, Iran is surely dangerous, and should we remove uh, non-essential personnel from harm's way? Of course we should. However, uh, we have been in the longest wars in America's history because we didn't get this right, and I can't imagine we want to go back to that. Uh, most people in Congress, even those who did not support the Iran deal, the JCPOA, were against the action the uh, Trump administration took to pull out of the deal. At least the deal was containing Iran's nuclear uh, capacity, at least for a decade. Uh, it wasn't containing its malign behavior, but certainly the action we took hasn't contained it either. So my view would be uh, to be very cautious, worry about a miscalculation on either side. I'm not sure the case is made, although we're already doing it, for sending more B-52s and a new aircraft carrier to the region. So, so what's going on here? We have the, the president this week denying reports in the New York Times that the Pentagon is being asked to draw up plans to send 120,000 U.S. personnel and then kind of saying, listen, if there's a threat, actually I would send double that, kind of denying but not denying the reports. Is, is there a risk here, as some European allies fear, that President Trump, by, with a hawkish national security advisor, could get pulled towards some kind of conflict, to the precipice of some kind of conflict, without really realizing he was getting there? Well, I think we're already getting pulled in that direction. Uh, the, the contingency plan for 120,000 troops is what, what the Pentagon does. It does contingency planning, so that doesn't scare me. Uh, sending assets to the region, which we've already done, against a threat that I don't think is yet proved uh, does begin to worry me. And I also worry that uh, we need our allies in the fight. We had our allies with us in Afghanistan. We did not have them with us in Iraq. And the Iraq, uh, as, as we know, the Iraq intelligence was wrong. So uh, I, I, I see this as worrisome. Let me just add a couple other pieces to the puzzle. One is Venezuela where we've called for regime change, which is obviously not happening. Mm. Our allies in the region uh, agreed to recognize uh, the, the Guaido uh, group, um, but no actions have been taken uh, really to turn around the current result, which is Maduro is in power, that's one. And number two, North Korea. We say we want to restart the talks, but if I were Kim Jong-un watching what's going on in Iran and watching what's going on in Venezuela, I would say to myself, I need my nukes. They're my insurance policy against a U.S. Uh, administration that right. can change on a dime and call for my regime to be gone. Okay, Jane Harmon, thank you very much for joining us. We'll carry on watching this one because I suspect we're going to have more on this over the next few days. And odd, this difference in intel between the Europeans.